second reemployment applicants. And this is on page one, starting on page one of your reasons, actions, definitions. Up at the bottom, the, the third one, reinstatement, reemployment. Um, this one is pretty long. This one starts on page one and goes all the way through page three. This one may take a while to go through. What is a reinstatement and reemployment action? This is the reemployment of a former employee after breaking service, which is separation of 31 calendar day, or is the reinstatement of an employee from a leave of absence. Okay, how is this one different than non deacon to deacon? Can anybody tell me? Oh, we just went over reinstatement under non deacon to deacon, didn't we? They were already getting an employee in the case. Right, that's the difference. The non-beacon and beacon were never in the beacon system. These are people that were in the beacon system um, and now they're coming back in. Okay? So that's the difference between non-beacon and beacon reinstatements and just regular reinstatement reemployment action. This action is also used to reinstate an employee who was previously employed in beacon with an agency and then transferred to a university or a non-beacon agency and then transferred back to a beacon agency without a break in service. Now, the reason we do that is because they were in the beacon system and then they went to a non-beacon, but we don't want to bring them back as a non-beacon person because they got a what now? They got a number. So if we use that non-beacon to beacon action code, it's going to give them another employee number. We don't want that. So we want that history for that employee to be all together. So when somebody's coming from a non-beacon university, or a non-beacon agency, you've got to look at the whole history. You can't just look at the last time they worked. You've got to look to see if they've ever worked with a beacon agency. And the longer we were in beacon, the more that will happen. Um, when we first made it to beacon, we didn't have much of that. But now that we've been in beacon about three years, there's people moving. You know, people move around all the time. Five years. Time's flying. Starting our fifth year. Fifth year. Starting our fifth year. Um, anyway, the longer we're in the system, we're going to have more of this. So you'll probably over time have less of the non-beacon and beacon actions and have more of just the reinstatement reemployment action. Okay. And the reason we have this is because we don't want them to have the other number of signs. Okay, let's go through these reasons that you can use for reinstatement reemployment. Starting on page one. We have the return to state within 12 months, same salary grade. Return to state within 12 months, higher salary grade. Return to state within 12 months, lower salary grade. Return to state within five years. Return to state after five years. So the same as the non-beacon and beacon action reasons, they mean the same thing in the um, green state and green employment action. The first three will only be used for people that's coming from graded to graded. Um, and then you would use return within five years to return after five years for all other reinstatements from other paid systems. The next action code reasons we're going to look at action reasons we're going to look at are the um, returns um, from a leave of absence. Um, we're going to return them for the same reason that they went out. So you have to know the success of using the right one of these is if they went out on you know, short-term disability and they're being reinstated, that would be the reinstatement reason. So you have to know why they went out to know which reinstatement reason you're going to use if they went out on a leave of absence. So that's the key to this, is knowing which leave of absence reasons they went out on to know which re, um, reinstatement reason they're going to return under. We have reinstatement um, from short-term disability, um, trial rehab, short-term disability with restriction, short-term disability complete, we have um, return from disciplinary suspension, return from investment or replacement, return from military, um, return from, okay, let's hit the return to workers comp. So we, cause we've made some recent changes. I think Ray went over that if you listened in on the conference call this week, but we've made some changes on the return to work for uh, workers comp. We've got four different um, reasons. You have return to work, first comp, with maximum medical improvement complete. So they've been returned to work. They don't have any restrictions. They're back, same, same position, same seniority, 
status and pay that they had prior to going out on workers' comp leave. So they've pretty much been totally released um, with no restrictions. That's um, the first one, number 13. Number 22 is return from workers' comp with maximum medical improvement but with disability. This person has reached ma maximum medical improvement. Um, they've been released, returned to work, but they still have a disability which prohibits them from performing like they were before when they went out. Okay, so that's two, 22. Number 12 is return from workers' comp with limited duty 20 to 40 hours. Okay, this is somebody that's not reached me maximum medical um, improvement, okay? This is somebody that's still having some workers' comp issues, um, still um, getting workers' comp benefits, but they've been approved to return to work um, anywhere from 20 to 40 hour work schedule. They've been released to return to work, limited duty, and the work schedule 20 or more hours a week. And then number 23 is return to work with limited duty less than 20 hours. So you see we're making a distinction between 20 or more or 20 or less, and that's because of benefits. And the way when we put you back in the system, you start earning benefits again. Um, the reason we have to split those out. Any questions about those? separate action to change their appointment um, to 20 hours. It has to be two different actions. 